Children's hospitals across the country have been receiving harassment and even threats of violence after right-wing propagandists have been fear-mongering about the gender-affirming care that said children's hospitals provide to trans youth. Now, that resulted a couple of weeks ago in this. This is an August 17th headline from Vice. Far-right extremists are threatening to execute doctors at a children's hospital. The viral Twitter account lips of TikTok promoted a lie about gender-affirming care at the hospital, and now doctors are getting death threats. Now, Libs of TikTok was temporarily suspended from Twitter for doing just that, and they didn't just target Boston Children's Hospital. They targeted multiple hospitals. But even after being suspended, as Media Matters reports, the owner of the Libs of TikTok account, Chaya Rychik, is vowing to continue targeting hospitals after her suspension is over. Now, even though the Libs of TikTok account specifically instigated all of this and started this campaign, Chaya Rychik did not act alone because right-wing propagandist Matt Walsh also joined in and directly incited harassment against Boston Children's Hospital. Here's a clip that we played on the program from a couple of weeks ago uh, from Media Matters, where he says that they need to take action against Boston Children's Hospital, followed by what happened just a couple of days later after he made those claims. Children's hospitals around the country are butchering, mutilating, and sterilizing their young patients. According to Boston Children's Hospital, literally every toddler who has ever been born or will ever be born is trans. Now, if it seems like they're casting the widest imaginable net in order to catch the most children they can, and put them all on a path to sterilization and butchery before they can even talk? Well, that's because that's exactly what these monsters are doing. And they've done it up until this moment without much resistance from the public. But that has to end. We have to stop making it so easy on them. And that's why I'm in the very early stages of trying to organize a national coordinated effort to fight back against this evil. You know, it's really just a matter of where do we begin. Maybe we begin at Boston Children's Hospital. Boston Children's Hospital says its staff is being threatened and harassed now after far-right activists on social media posted misinformation claiming they perform gender-affirming hysterectomy procedures on young girls. The hospital says it's not true. They do not perform those procedures for anyone under the age of 18. Boston Children's Hospital says it is proud, though, to be home to the first pediatric and adolescent transgender health program in the United States. The hospital, though, now is working with law enforcement to try to better protect its staff in the face of these lies. So this is very clearly stochastic terrorism, and it hasn't stopped after doctors received death threats. They haven't stopped targeting doctors individually or different children's hospitals. And now it's all culminated in this. On August 30th, police set up a perimeter around Boston Children's Hospital after a bomb threat was called in. The building had to be sweeped, according to NBC10 Boston. Now, for additional details, NBC News reports the hospital said it is working with law enforcement and outside experts after it received the anonymous bomb threat and it moved quickly to protect patients and employees. Quote, we are relieved no bomb was found and that employees and patients are safe, it said. We remain vigilant in our our efforts to battle the spread of false information about the hospital and our caregivers. We are committed to ensuring the hospital is a safe and secure place for all who work here and come here. We will provide additional information as we are able. The Boston Police Department said it sent in a bomb squad to the Children's Medical Center at about 8.14 p.m., but no suspicious items were recovered or located. Quote, it's still an active investigation, Detective John Boyle said by phone Wednesday morning. Now, thankfully, the bomb threat turned out to be false, but it's not like no harm was done. And one story in particular illustrates how harmful this was. So one woman named Patricia MacArthur Doval, she was forced to leave the hospital while they were doing the bomb sweep. And she explains how she was really scared because she had to leave her baby in the newborn intensive care unit. Couldn't take the baby out. So ask yourself this question, how many surgeries were disrupted. How many parents had to leave their children in their hospital rooms because they couldn't be disconnected from life-saving machines? How much harm did this actually cause because right-wing propagandists like Lips of TikTok and Matt Walsh worked their supporters into a frenzy thinking that this hospital was actually doing harm 
to children. No, actually, they're helping children. That's what they're there to do. And now, not only are you stoking harassment and violence against the hospital staff, but you're disrupting procedures, separating parents from their children. So you might ask yourself, well, is Matt Walsh going to come out and say, all right, this has gone too far. I understand that we're all concerned, but perhaps the best way to carry out our anti-trans agenda isn't necessarily targeting literal children's hospitals. Well, no, that's not what he's saying. In fact, he is demanding an apology from the left for daring to blame him for the violence that he stoked against the Boston Children's Hospital. He writes via Twitter, Last night, thousands of idiot leftists were absurdly blaming me and libs of TikTok for a bomb threat at Boston Children's. Today, the story has disappeared because police quickly determined the whole thing was a false alarm. I don't expect we'll get any apologies, though. Hang on a second. You inspired... A bomb threat. Fake or real, either way, that's harassment. Calling in a bomb threat is a form of terrorism. But yet, because there was no bomb that was found, you're expecting other people to apologize to you? I mean, he's deranged. Matt Walsh is actually deranged. He continues, I would like to know what false alarm means exactly. Police are being coy about it. That's because it's an ongoing investigation, you fucking dipshit. Plenty of reason to wonder whether false alarm really means a leftist hoax. Of course, certainly lots of precedent for that. If there was really a threat but no bomb, they wouldn't call it a false alarm and they would still be trying to track down the culprit. Clearing the scene in two hours and calling it a false alarm almost certainly means there was no threat at all, which still leaves questions. I just read more of the details. Police arrived on the scene at 9.20 and had it cleared by 10 p.m. 40 minutes, becoming increasingly clear there was never any threat. So this is what they're always going to do. If you're wondering, well, what will happen if they end up getting somebody killed because of their rhetoric? Well, they're just going to either claim it was a false flag or blame the left. They will never take responsibility for their stochastic terrorism. It's shocking to me that he has this surprised Pikachu face after for weeks helping to spearhead this campaign against children's hospitals. And we're not just talking about individual hospitals. Like Matt Walsh has been sharing the names of doctors and their pictures, saying that they're butchering tra trans children. It's genuinely stochastic terrorism. And now that somebody called in a bomb threat to further harass and intimidate the hospital because it was a false alarm, well, he's claiming that, you know, no harm was done here. Except I just told you the harm that was done. Even if it was a false alarm, that disrupted operations at this hospital, which is trying to save children's lives, treat cancer patients, do surgeries on children. And because you have an agenda to push and you want to monetize transphobia, you're making it seem as if this hospital is a danger to children when the opposite is true. And now when things escalate even further because of your rhetoric, you're claiming that an apology is owed to you. No, you owe the hospital staff an apology. But he's not going to give that. So this hospital staff at this point has been terrorized by Matt Walsh and libs of TikTok to the point where I think they can demonstrate real harm. They can actually try to go for defamation. And, you know, look, we saw what happened with Alex Jones and the Sandy Hook situation. The parents sued rightfully so for defamation because there was real harm done there. He claimed that that was a false flag. The parents had to move. They faced death threats and harassment. And now we're seeing that play out again, albeit with children's hospitals where their operations are being paused so the police can do bomb sweeps because presumably their supporters are the ones who are calling in threats after they've stoked the flames here. So look, I wouldn't blame Boston Children's Hospital or any of these other hospitals if they actually did want to take legal action against Matt Walsh and libs of TikTok. So perhaps what he's saying here by downplaying it and denying it, maybe that's him just trying to defend himself legally. But either way, legal or not legal, this is unethical and disgusting, but they will not stop even if somebody gets seriously hurt. They don't care. Like Matt Walsh is trying to emulate uh, Bill O'Reilly's Tiller Tiller the Baby Killer uh, propaganda that led to an abortion doctor being murdered. He's trying to do that, albeit with the doctor that provides gender-affirming care to trans youth. It's genuinely a sickening campaign, and these people are absolutely ruthless and morally bankrupt. Don't listen to them when they say that they care about children after their supporters are disrupting the services of hospitals that save children's lives.